Welcome back to another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today, live from West Virginia University. It's a syndicated show that sits squarely at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and marketing practice. It's a bi-weekly program that will highlight emerging and current trends impacting marketers today. And today we're brought to you by, or hosted by, one of the revolving crew there at WVU, Cindy Greenglass. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Paul. I never know what to call you guys. I I, I like that revolving crew or a revolving, uh, you're not guest host, you're each host, but uh, we have a whole bevy of you to draw upon here. Yes, at least we're not a revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's always the same. But, uh, well, you've got a, a fascinating faculty and, and always fascinating topics. Who would you bring along today? Well, today we are uh, delighted to have a fellow um, WVU alumni and faculty member, Larry Stoltz. Larry um, has been an IMC faculty member since 2007, and uh, he served as department chair for the Bachelor of Arts in Advertising program at the Art Institute of Atlanta, where he taught courses in conceptual thinking and campaign development for more than 20 years. Prior to entering the teaching phase of his life, he operated design and advertising firms in New Orleans and Atlanta with clients in hospitality, tourism, real estate, corporate communications, healthcare, and social services. Um, Larry holds a Bachelor of Arts and Master's of Arts degrees in visual design from Purdue. He earned his Ph.D. in educational policy, social foundations from Georgia State University in 2006. And he's a winner of the 2010 Golden Quill Teaching Award. So welcome, Larry. Well, thank you. It sounds like I have been busy in my lifetime, doesn't it? (laughs) (laughs) You have been busy, and it is a great pleasure whenever I get to see you when the faculty gets together at uh, West Virginia University. And um, it is always a pleasure to spend time hearing from you and and learning from you. So we look forward to a great half an hour together. You can share with our audience some of your insights. Um, I want to kick us off a bit here. The topic is... um, ideation techniques, concept development, and IMC. And, you know, um, when I think of creative thinking and I think of uh, being creative, you know, I never thought of myself as a creative person. I'm a data gal. And, gee, data people aren't very creative, are they? And creative people, you always think, are the ones that have the great ideas. And, um, you know, that bias, we have the left brain, right brain. But um, you've studied and taught creative thinking for uh, many years. So um, I'd like to start, Larry, by um, asking you, you know, uh, how did that study come about? And, and, and what have you learned about creative thinking in these years? Well, I've learned quite a bit. I, when I ran my studio and my agency uh, many years ago, I was always searching for newer and bigger ideas. You know, I was always kind of panic-stricken. Uh, am I going to come up with a good idea today or tomorrow Do I re- and when I really need it? So I subscribed to communica- Communication Arts Magazine, Print Magazine, and they all ended up with lots of dog-eared pages and lots of post-its sticking out the side. And every, every one of those was a, man, I wish I had thought of that kind of idea. You know, <laughs> you had that. So anyway, I discovered creative thinking books, and I found several by, like, Doug Hall, Michael Michalko, Roger Von Eck, and Edward de Bono, and they all pointed to process. They all talked about ways of thinking that you could, you could discover new ideas, interesting and fun ways to think and gave you little experiences and experiments you could do. And uh, that grew into something that I actually built a college course around on creative thinking and advertising and some of those ways of put of thinking to, to get my students to generate ideas. And they did. They generated things that surprised them and me. And it was just a fascinating study, and I decided to make pretty much a career out of creative thinking and helping people develop concepts. Wow. So um, in the end, uh, creative thinking is also a process. I mean, it, you, you don't think of it that way. I just thought people are either very creative and, and ideate really easily or they're not. So there is a process behind that after all. Um, tell me about um, 
brainstorming and, and, and mind mapping and, 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 you know, what are some of the dependable creative thinking triggers and inspiration techniques that you've um, discovered and developed? Okay, I've, uh, I've had several students, obviously, uh, that come into the course saying, you know, Professor Stoltz, I am not creative. I don't know how I'm going to do in this class. And I just tell them that I can help. We can work out. We can work on creativity and breaking through the clutter and all the, the things that people worried about, about. And I've had several students at the end of the course just be totally proud of themselves and have a campaign that they can show in their portfolio that is creative. But what I tell them is that it's a scary thing to find that that you have to come up with that one big idea, the one concept for your client or for for your for your class. Um, I have discovered different creative thinking inspirations and triggers. And you mentioned brainstorming. That's one that many, many people have gotten involved with. I think brainstorming is group think. It's group talk. It can get noisy. It can get fun. It can get loud. It can it can get a little bit crazy. Um, but brainstorming is one that we've all enjoyed. I like one called mind mapping because mind mapping is an individual kinds of kind of experience uh, the stems from brainstorming, but you do it by yourself, and you describe. Uh, I like I like to have people just take pages and pages of paper and put their ideas as as many as they can get down and give themselves twenty minutes, two hundred, three hundred ideas, write them down, and then you go back and you study those and and circles and arrows and draw connections, and pretty soon, uh, that's essentially what creative thinking is all about: is put, drawing connections. And so that's one that I like to, uh, I enjoy leading people to do. There's another one that I like called Random Stimulus Response that uh, I took from a couple of the books that I read, where you take random objects, random words, and draw connections. And, that, and then you start applying those connections. Well, how does that apply to the, the problem that I'm trying to solve? How am I going to come up with this ad for toothpaste based on uh, an acorn and and a bulldozer, you know, those kind of things. But it happens. It's great fun drawing those connections. Uh, I then discovered that images can do the same thing. And I developed a list, a a deck of cards called uh, Tail Feathers that I took a lot of pictures in nature. And then on the front of the card, I have the picture from nature, a nature nature object. And on the back, I have little triggers, little things that that make you think about what about that, that tree or that toad or whatever and uh it then you start drawing connections and and those inspire ideas too um let's see i've got a couple of others that i wanted to tell you about one of them is assumption smashing uh you take everything you know about a a sub a product or a a, um an item and figure out what your assumptions are and then smash those say no what if there's another idea you know cars originally did not have that uh rear view mirrors Uh, let alone backup cameras and so cars didn't have those and somebody had to break the assumption that cars don't you don't have to look backwards cereal in the original uh kinds of cereal did not have fruit so somebody said well what can we do about cereal make it more fun so um that's called what ifing and assumption smashing all great innovations come from have come from that another is one of my favorites and most fun is don't sell me something promise me something if you're trying to market cosmetics, you're not selling cosmetics, are you? No, you're selling beauty, you're selling pride, you're selling how you look uh, in, in public. So that's what you're, that's what people are buying. They're not buying the cosmetic. Another one that I think is kind of funny is how about a drill, a regular electric drill? You're not buying a drill. You're buying holes. You're buying smooth, sanded, polished surfaces. And so the, the approach is to show people the benefit of what you're trying to get them to subscribe to or buy or believe huh. well larry this is fascinating you so it sounds like you do a lot of these exercises with your um classes and your students um can you direct our listeners to um places where maybe they could um get access to some of this great um information either books that you recommend or you know do you make your cards available that people can use in their own um Creative thinking. Where could we send some folks? Well, there's uh, uh, several books. I, I like to recommend the books because they're illustrated and they're fun to look at. There's 
uh, Roger Von Eck, O V O N O E C H, uh, wrote a book called A Whack on the Side of the Head, and he's got a lot of this stuff in it. He also published a whack deck. You can buy a deck of little flashcards. Um, a man named Doug Hall wrote a book called Jumpstart Your Brain, and it's largely aimed at business businessmen and helping them break their what they feel is a lack of creativity, and it really works. Uh, Michael Natalko uh, did a book called Thinker Toys, and the second book called uh, Creative. I'm trying to look at my bookshelf, uh, but anyway, if you look at Michael Natalko's Thinker Toys, it'll promote his other books. So, and then each of them have a, a website, and you can go to look at their website. Um, so that's, well, that's you know, at least three. Great. Yeah. We have um, your uh, contact information um, on our website here after the podcast. And um, if any of our listeners want to reach out to you, uh, do we have permission to have them contact you directly and you could guide them appropriately after our show? Yeah, that'd be great. I've got a website, too. It's ideatailwind.com. Right. You can go on there and just learn a little bit about the, my, my company, and then it's got my contact number and my email address on there, too. Great. Well, um, it's interesting to hear you talk about how we can create a process around creative thinking. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a, a situation where I thought, wow, I have to come up with something brilliant, and I've got five minutes. Um I remember when I was a student in the IMC program at West Virginia University in the capstone program and, you know, trying to figure out how to come up with the, quote, big idea. And um, I I had a a, a favorite expression that uh, I learned through that process from Albert Einstein, who said, creativity is just intelligence having fun. And, um, you know, we have to overcome our fear of uh, you don't just come up with creative ideas. You develop them intelligently. Yeah, um, that's for I sure. I want to just move fun. on to one other quick question before we'll go on a break in a few minutes, Larry. And and that okay. is, um, you know, you've talked about process. So um, you don't develop anything out of the blue. Uh, there seems to be a, a, a process that you're following. Um, talk a little bit more about how that process works that you've seen. Um, we may start that conversation now and then pick it up after the break. Yeah, we can do that. There's uh, There are a lot of people that have a process, and they, they get real creative with how, what they call their process. Like they all the letters, all of it begins with I or B. Like identify, investigate, illuminate. I've seen that several times. But the one that I like a lot is one where I can personify myself into the phase of the process and actually believe I am that person. The first thing you are is a, it's a four-step process. First, you're an explorer, and you dig deep, and you do your research, all your homework, and you make lots of notes, and you explore every possible way of solving the problem that other people have done and write down what you might do. So that's your explorer part. <clears throat> then you move on, and you be an, what I call the artist. And that's when you do your sketches, write down um, little phrases, draw circles and arrows on those too. <clears throat> and so you become an artist about getting your ideas on paper and when you feel like you've exhausted that, then you go on and you become a judge. You judge yourself. You judge your own work. And that's really, those two people don't get along well. The artist and the judge don't get along well. So they have to go back and forth and back and forth. You're going to be an artist and then a judge and an artist and then a judge until you know you're right, until you know you have a golden idea, the big idea, and then you become the warrior. And then the warrior goes, that's when you go to your client or your creative director or your team member and say, this is what I believe we should do, and this is why. So that's the explorer, artist, judge, warrior process, and it just works. I've had people say, I didn't think there was a process, but now I see that there can be. Terrific. Let's um, think about that uh, four-step process while we take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more with Larry Stoltz about concepts that seem to be working and what he has seen over the years. So, Paul, we're going to send it back to you for a minute. All right, and in that minute, we want to remind you that West Virginia University's online data marketing communications program is the first graduate program of its kind in the country. 
focusing on strategic thinking, like we're talking about today, critical problem solving, and informed decision making. The Data Marketing Communications Program at West Virginia University prepares you for your career in marketing by learning those innovative techniques and tactics that award-winning faculty can teach you, like the, the guest today. It's easy to learn more. It isn't a four-step process. It's just a one-step process. You need to go to dmc.wvu. That's for Data Marketing Communications at West Virginia University. dmc.wvu.edu. All right. Back to you. Thank you, Paul. You're getting better and better at this all the time. I am. You know, I'm talking this academic jargon easier and easier here because it's starting to make sense to me here. You're going to have a master's degree in a very short time after all these podcasts with our wonderful guests, Paul. You know, can I ask you one quick question? Because you've had a lot of shows and you keep bringing lots of faculty. How many people, uh, what's the size of your faculty? What's the size of your program here? Uh, well, there are over 500 instructors wow. involved in the IMC and DMC wow. master's program, bringing um, a collection of very, very different skills, expertise, both um, academically and professionally, such as, you know, Larry and the um, creative thinking and uh, folks like myself on data and analytics. We have uh, web expertise and customer experience, healthcare marketing, cause marketing. Oh, there's so many different um, programs. And these are people are all over the country, and they're doing it day to day. These aren't just theorists trying to tell you last year's uh, great big idea here. I mean, these are people on the front lines doing it today. That is correct. All of our faculty are folks like Larry and myself who are practitioners doing the work every day, who are also seasoned academics. So we are blending the two worlds together, the practical and the academic, to bring uh, uh, both perspectives to our students. Well, I want to hear a practical way to get more creative here. He's got four steps. I'm ready to write them down. (laughs) All right. Well, Larry, we were just talking about explorer, artist, judge, warrior, um, it sounds to me like the artist and the judge is a little conflicting there. Um, do, do you ever, I want to follow up on that question, on that discussion, um, do you ever find it might be easier to bounce an idea off of somebody else because, you know, it's hard to really judge your own ideas? Can you really be objective? Are there times when it's better to ask uh, somebody else for their opinion or no? Keep it to yourself until you're ready to go, you know, full force. Well, that depends on your personality, I think. I think it's really good to work in teams. Uh, Teams, though, uh, each individual tends to get a little possessive of their ideas, and then they tend to fight over them and duke it out, you know, who's going to have. But that's when you get into the group think and the brainstorming uh, philosophy. So, I like to develop everything as fully as I can by myself and then take it to my team. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go straight to a client and risk the agency's reputation. I don't think that's a very smart (laughs) idea at all. (laughs) But but, uh, I like to go through the process on my own and uh, then share. That's my preference. I have have, uh, students that really do not like teamwork, but we try to build it up in them, don't we? In this program, we have to. Yes. Yes, we do. Um, so I was right. looking at, you were you were talking about some of the things that have worked in the past. Um, there's a lot of campaigns that are out there right now that, that we love. Uh, going through the contemporary campaigns is, uh, everybody's going to have an opinion. We all like the mayhem, the insurance mayhem guy. We all like oh, yeah. Kit Kat. And how do you eat a Kit Kat? We all, I particularly like Twix bar where you, you either eat the left end of the bar or the right end of the bar. And there's a whole website about are you left or right with your Twix bar. And there's just, it's a bunch of really wild stuff. But I wanted to maybe, if we have two minutes here, I'll tell you about what we call the unique selling propositions that sure. you create creative ideas on in advertising. Um, there are 16 unique selling propositions, and, and almost everything that we've ever seen in advertising comes from one or two or four or six of those combined. And the first one is unprecedented. You've all, we've all seen things that never existed before, advertised, electric cars, Apple Pay, wearable technology. Those are all things that are unprecedented. 
and that's one hook that we can use in marketing. There's new and improved. We've seen that forever. Toilet paper, toothpaste, laundry detergent, it, it's new and improved, and they, the package will tell you so. There's mode of action is a third one. The mode of action is how things work, like Pepto-Bismol. We all know how Pepto-Bismol works. There's site of action, where it works. One of my favorites is Doan's back pills. It's for back pain, right? Site of action. Well, you take a Doan's back pill, and you, the Doan's back pill medicine goes by your shoulder that aches and says, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I'm a back pill. i got to move on. Um, there's efficacy. That's how well something works. Uh, the myriad new medic, medical ads we see on television are all based on efficacy, what the, what they do. Comparison, the original was the Coke Pepsi Challenge, and right now we're seeing the Chevy Pickup Truck Challenge, which is a, the Ford, the Dodge, the Chevy. Which one's the best best truck? Then there's Problem Solution. Uh, uh, the Budweiser is a great one. They did water to disaster areas. So there was a problem of disaster areas needing water. Budweiser called their production line together and, uh, can't put water in cans and send it. There's price and value, Costco, Aldi, those are examples. Uh, parity, Me Too, that's really hard when you're trying to advertise salt, sugar, uh, flour. How do you do that? Um, quality and service is the tenth one. That's car dealerships, Goodyear, Best Buy, and Geek Squad all want to promote their quality and service. Testimonial is one must use the product and then say how much they like it. Then related to that, is third-party endorsement. Uh, they don't have to use the product. They just have, they're paid. They're paid to say they like that product. Uh, borrowed interest is one that's uh, unrelated associations. Corona beer on the beach, that, that, those don't relate, but the advertising shows they do. Uh, one of the little bit weird here is say, Cialis, and those people are in separate rowboats. How does that work? Um, slice of life is another uh examples life situations like mcdonald's and cheerios slice slice of life we see all the time image and lifestyle um yeti the yeti coolers and subaru those are dog lovers we all know that and then of course the 16th selling proposition that works is sex it always has sold and it always will the clairol herbal essence proved that so those are the 16 things that you can that i recommend people base creative thinking on Aha. Now that's a lot to choose. Um, th <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of things to choose there. from there. Holy cow. <laughs> you know, a couple of them that come to, um, to mind there that we've seen a lot of, um, is, um, you know, when you said paid endorsement, I, I, I hope you don't mind. I can put you on the spot here. You know, um, there's, there's been recently some conversation around, you know, um, paid endorsement with influencers, um, do you consider that authentic? Is it authentic? The, 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 the movement towards micro-influencers, everyday people not paid. Um, just wondering if you have a point of view, Larry, on, on that in today's climate of um, paid endorsement. Do you think that's still going to be as effective? Well, it seems to be growing and growing. Uh, paid influ influencers, uh, paid endorsers. And there is a lot of debate about that. I would prefer personally to be talking to somebody that authentically does wear that shirt or read that book or whatever they're endorsing. Um, the testimonial thing I like. The paid endorser is, it can be debated whether that's good or not, but most of the advertisers that I know of are being very careful to have it be believable and be authentic and remove the endorsers from the uh and from the program that are not being sincere they have to do that wonderful so unprecedented that obviously is an easy one um, i think unfortunately most of us find ourselves living in the world of parody um you know what you said that is a tough one where or we're competing on a me too basis and you've given us a whole bunch of really good um, unique selling propositions to think about that take us outside of uh, this arena um 
Larry, I want to ask you, now I'm going to move on to the digital space a little bit. You know, we start talking about that a little bit with the micro um, influencers, but with all the varied media options we have, the outlets, the platforms, we got all different avenues of media uh, available to us now. How are we to create marketing campaigns, integrated marketing campaigns um, that have an impact on our audience? Uh, what comes first? Where do we start? Which what would you guide us on? Well, we've uh, talked about that in the, among the faculty, and that uh, uh, many years ago, over the years, a, a campaign would begin with a print ad, right? But no longer. It just doesn't work that way anymore. And the big brands are trying to figure out the digital space, and we're trying to keep up with the big brands, and they're trying to keep up with it, too. I love the fact that we are paying attention to the consumer. The consumer is the one that is really driving where we need to go we have to pay attention to what they're they're doing we have to go where they're living uh we're moving quickly in the video direction um we love storytelling we all love personalization we love conversation about brands and services and causes and so wherever people are living on in the digital space for the products that we're promoting or the services or the causes we're promoting that's where we have to go we have to know where they live uh, the video is obviously going to be growing and growing. It's up to 80% of what we consume on in the Internet right now. Uh, the emerging texts like uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, we're all talking about that. But those are all just tools, right? It's the concept, it's the creative concept that makes people take notice. And that's why we begin with a course like mine or thinking like I recommend and show in order to know how we can apply our concept to the digital space in the right size, frame, whatever we have to do. We have to know all of that. I think that's great. You have to know where people are living and uh, where they are. And, uh, Larry, I hate to, to have to say we've reached the end of our half an hour together, and there's so much we could have talked about further. Um, but we have to let our audience move on um, to get on with the rest of their day. I want to thank Larry Stoltz for a, a wonderful and thought-provoking time with us today on our podcast. And uh, we'll look forward to joining you again, Paul, uh, from WVU Today Radio. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. You've been listening to another episode of WVU Radio Today, brought to you on the Funnel Radio Network for at-work listeners like you.